Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. Still working on the my runabout boat trailer. Last episode, we replaced the springs, put new springs on the axle, replaced these rollers, and getting ready to uh, pull the hubs. I've got a couple items to take care of, and then we'll pull the the wheel hubs and repack the bearings and replace the grease seals, put them back on and put the put the tires back on, the wheels back on. The wheels are still over at the tire shop, so hopefully I'm going to get them today. And uh, we'll get this trailer back on the road. All right, so stick around. General purpose winch strap. Got it when we open it up. This will be something else. We'll... Put that on the trailer. And then that strap goes. That's the that's the um, gunnel across the gunnels tie down and then I have two transom straps as well and then the bow of course Both of these push caps are split. There's one. Got to hold a heavy hammer against one side. There. Next thing I want to do is replace this winch strap this is old and uh, don't know that I can trust it anymore so we'll pull it off here and put a new one on I've got a got a new one here so we'll put this one on
I don't recommend that approach, but if you want to give it a shot, go ahead. Just don't hurt yourself with the handle. <laughs> All right, I hit it with some PB Blaster, but I think... a little bit of lithium grease. Need to get a new this is the safety strap i'm going to replace that one too so i get i have to go get that again these nuts are staked so they act as lock nuts
I've been trying out this diamond cutoff wheel and it seems to work okay. I think it cuts a little slower than a regular abrasive disc and maybe requires a little more power, but it seems to work okay. It's supposed to be a hundred times longer life. I'm constantly changing zip discs or cut off wheels, cut off discs. So we'll see. I'm going to play with it some. Leave it on here a while, see what I think of it. So far, uh, it seems to be okay. I don't know. <clears throat> Probably be better on a corded grinder where, you know, the power consumption's not an issue. You know, I think the these bearings have grease looks good, but since it hadn't been changed in a number of years, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and put new grease seals in. But there's no water contamination of this grease at all. Well, that wasn't good. So, even though this this axle's been underwater, launching and retrieving boats multiple times, that just shows you how good the bearing buddy works. It's spring-loaded. There's a spring here, and this plate moves in and out, you pump grease into it, the plate moves out under pressure and maintains positive pressure on the hub. So if any grease leaks out the rear seal, for example, it makes it up, keeps the, keeps the hub under positive pressure so that you don't have to worry about water intrusion. All right, so we'll take this in the shop, drive the rear seal out, Go around the other side, take the other one off. This looks really good. I mean, there's nothing to complain about here. This is, looks beautiful. For a 30-year-old trailer, um, 
That's in great shape. Sorry about that. Alright, again this spindle looks great, so no scoring on the oil seal surface. Let's go get the oil seals, knock the oil seals out so we can go get replacements. And this is, uh, these bearings, since this is a boat trailer and this, this trailer, you know, it gets, the hubs can potentially go underwater, launching a boat, retrieving a boat. You use marine grease. So these hubs are filled with marine uh, wheel bearing grease. It's different than the you would put on your automobile. I mean, I suppose you could use it on your automobile, but it's a design for marine environment. Of course, costs five times as much.
So that's the rear bearing and the and the grease seal. We'll knock those out. And knock the grease seal out. Or maybe more correctly. Nice, we got the bearings and the bearing buddies, nuts, washers all cleaned out. I'm gonna take them over to the bench and dry them off.
All right, so these uh, hubs are ready to go back on the spindles. We'll go move outside and do that. All right, so you want to make sure this surface back here is clean and because that's where the grease seal rides on. Excess grease there. Now you torque this down tight. Um, I go to about 20 or 25 foot pounds. And then make sure it's, there's no play. And then back it off about an eighth of a turn. You should be able you shouldn't be able to feel any play, but it should spin with just the resistance of the grease. So there's no slop. Just the tiniest Tiniest little bit, okay. You could put a dial indicator on it and, you know, get it to a spec, but I don't know that that's really necessary.
can feel no play. So, I mean, there's a little bit of slack in this nut, but it can't turn because the cotter pin is there. So it can't turn, but that much. And even totally backed off. Can't feel any, any slack in the bearings. come back with the grease gun and fill this with grease. That feels good. Look who we have trying to sneak out. Butchie, go on back in. Butchie, Butchie, <laughs> let's go say hi to him. That's a good boy. You're my good boy. Yeah, okay. My hands are a little greasy. You stay and be good. That's what I get for leaving the door open. All right, we've got one hub on. Let's get the second one on here. It's always good to, whoops, forgot. About cleaning this off. Looks like that's where the grease seal was riding though I can't feel I can't feel a uh, groove all right the other side didn't have this line and I can't feel, it's not like it's a groove, you can't feel it with your fingernail. So I'm just going to use a piece. This is, this is 1500 grit. So I mean this is super fine. I'm not sure it'll even take, take this off, but. Yeah, it's too fine to take that off all the way. So this is super fine. Don't do this with, you know, uh, coarse grit sandpaper. You'll ruin this surface. But this is so fine that it basically is just polishing, 
polishing the surface. I'm going to, that's all I'm going to do. Considering that it wasn't, the wheel, the grease seal was not leaking before, and I can't feel a groove, it's just like a little discolored line. So we're going to let it go. I will say this, I am in a different situation than some people as far as this trailer is concerned. I'm not trailering thousands of miles. This is really only local use. Now, so I, I wouldn't, I don't think there's anything I'm doing that would be different if you haven't uh, mounted wheel bearings before, then you may want to use a dial indicator to make sure your backlash is, is suitable. Now, I've, been, I've done this so many times over my life you know, it's wheel bearings. It's, it, you get a feel for how tight to make the, this nut when you set the, you go pretty snug, 20, 30 foot pounds. And that seats the bearings. Turn it. Try it again, and then you back off an eighth of a turn, an eighth to a quarter. You need to find the cotter pin hole. And what happens is it's underneath one of these studs so you've got to loosen it a little bit more to, find, to, to get into the hole. There it is right there. Okay. Again, you shouldn't feel any perceptible slack in the bearings. And they should move with just the resistance of the grease, basically, is what is the way I kind of think about it.
All right, I have another tube of this grease. I'm going to put it in the grease gun. We'll come back and fill the bearing buddy. All right, so I put the other tube of marine grease in the grease gun and pumped it till all the old, um, the other type of grease that I use for most of my equipment. You can use this on anything too. So you see the plate here is spring loaded. So we want to put enough grease in there to cause the You don't want it squirting out the back. All right. So we've got a little bit coming out here around this ring. So that plate has been pushed out about a half an inch. So let's put a little bit of grease on the outside here to help the cap seal. All right, that's done. The plate, the plate right here, pushed out about a quarter of an inch. What I'll do is after I run this once, use the trailer, I'll come back and top off the grease. Okay, she's done. What you doing, Butchie? No, don't go anywhere. Come here. Come here. All right, let's go back inside. Come on. Come on. I don't think they would sneak away, but you never know. Turn my back, get distracted by something. So we mount the spare here. It just has this big U-bolt. 
that um, goes around the So these are Hercules tires, steel belted radial for trailer service only. Power ST2, load range C, 1870 pounds at 50 PSI max. All right, the last thing I want to do is just torque the lug nuts or check the torque on them. It's uh, 70 foot-pounds. Okay. All right, I think that does it for this uh, trailer maintenance effort. I have some stuff to pick up out here. I'll do that after we close out. Uh, I think everything I wanted to do has been done. I did get some more straps, the, uh, transom straps and another gunnel strap. Um, I don't think that, I mean, unless I have the boat on here, there's no sense pulling that stuff out. And uh, I think everything is good to go on this trailer now. So I may go get my 
run about uh, a couple weeks, maybe, pull it out of the water. I have some maintenance I want to do on that boat, so um, we'll see about maybe a future video on rehabbing a, let's see, how old is that boat? It's a 1979. It's got a 1992 outboard on 1979 uh, runabout. So, 40, 44 years old, boat 44 years old. <laughs> it's, I've had it for over 30 years. So, it's been a good little boat. It's spent a lot of time pulling the kids around on inner tubes on local lakes and uh, many fond memories. My kids are 35 and 40 years old now, but when they were, you know, in 92, they'd be 30 years, um, you know, five and five and 10 years old, we spent many a summer afternoon down at the lakes, um, one of several different lakes, uh, pulling them around on inner tu on tubes and um, at that time I could <laughs> I could water ski the boat didn't have really enough horsepower to get me out of the water very easily um, so um, at one point I weighed <laughs> a lot less than I weigh now anyway that's it for this video part two of the trailer maintenance and um, she's good to go uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Leave a comment if you see something that you do differently that I did or you think I did something <laughs> wrong. Post a comment. And uh, uh, I don't know that. Uh, well, we'll see what we'll see what you come up with if you come up with anything I should have done or didn't do right. Uh, I've been maintaining this trailer for 30 years. Um, been doing wheel bearings for. 50, at least 50 years, more than that, since I got my first car in 1970, something like that. So um, that's that's 50 years, isn't it? Anyway, um, that's how I do it. Uh, I'm not saying it's the perfect way or the way you should do it necessarily, um, but in my experience, what I've done here is um, suitable for the intended purpose of this of this. thanks for watching leave a comment subscribe thumbs up ring the bell all that good stuff we'll see you guys on the next one